Good morning, y'all. I thought I would come in. Excuse me. I just got out of the shower, put on a fresh pair of pajamas because I plan on not leaving my house all day. And why not have a video on the internet to embarrass your kids for all of eternity, right? So, pajama mama strikes again. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of things. I feel like I've not been here in ages to share with you the things that I've been working on. And... I think I've shown you these before uh, some little I think this is plastic things that I got at tractor supply marked down from $9.99 to $5.99 and they you can turn them on here on the bottom I don't know if you can see that or not but it lights up in there and looks like a real candle inside and here's the stage I'm at right now in my decorating of it and see if I can get it close enough for you to see I got a little bling bling just on the front side and I'm tying some ribbons on here because this is actually going to be hanging in the background of uh, something that I'm working on and so while I was doing that I thought well what can I share this morning if I can't come on and share my project what can I share well I got all kinds of really nice ribbon when I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday so that I would have the ribbon for this project but they had their fall ribbon on sale which they didn't have very much of because all the colors I bought here you can see are fall colors but none of that was on sale um, but they had some Christmas ribbon that was on sale and they're still putting it out but I thought I can show you how to make a bow and hopefully I, I think I've got this set up in the wrong place so if I need to stand up I will so I've got this roll of ribbon and it's sort of a pewter color with some gold bling bling in the middle I don't know what I'm gonna use it for yet but I'm sure I'm gonna use it for something so I thought I would show you how to make a bow this comes as part of being a florist and they don't really teach you this in florist school it took time to uh, to learn and in the beginning when I had my flower shop back in I think 1996 or so we had like a machine I think it was called a bow dabra that we used to make bows with until we didn't have time for messing with a bow dabra anymore we just had to be able to make a bow really quick with our hands I'm gonna see if I can lower this light a little bit or this stand a little bit to where you can maybe see my hands better and I don't know if it's gonna lower or not let's see Nope, I think it's already as low as it's going to go. So, um, I'll stand up. How about that? Okay, so you take your length of ribbon. They usually start with them folded like this. I don't like to waste any of that. The ribbon's expensive anyways. This was 10 bucks for this one, but it was part of the 50% off because it was their Christmas, and I'm now getting glitter all over the floor. But your other tools that you'll need for this, you need your ribbon, and if you can get the ribbon that's wired on the sides when you're making a larger ribbon, it's going to help it to hold its shape better. That's not necessary when you're making small bows, because your loops are smaller and if you don't need it to stand up then you can get the regular ribbon and not have to pay for uh, the wired ribbon and most flower shops do not use wired ribbon for the majority of their bows they use what's called number nine ribbon or uh, yeah number nine ribbon number five ribbon number three ribbon different sizes but usually the number nine I think that's probably maybe an inch and a half or something like that and this is a two inch ribbon i think no two and a half inch ribbon here but anyway here's how uh you would start with making your bow you're going to need something to either tie it with you can uh or you can uh, something that's really good is pipe cleaners i didn't have a pipe cleaner this morning this is called floral wire if you have this this is a really uh it comes in kind of a long piece that's probably 16 inches long 14 inches long something like that I'm going to cut that in half because we don't need that long of a piece and depending on whether you intend on you I'm just cutting it right in half with my wire cutters depending on whether you are gonna put this on a wreath you could have left this long or this short uh, if it's going on a grapevine wreath the short one that I'm going to show you uh, will be enough uh, if you're going to put it on a gift basket or on top of a gift or something like that you would use uh, you would use this is a piece of yarn because that's what I could find. But you would use what we call balloon ribbon, and that's where you get like the spools of ribbon that have the skinny ones that you can pull with your scissors and make twirly. That's what most of the time in the flower shop in our for our gift baskets that we use to tie them because then you could twirl that ribbon on back. 
I'm just going to use this. Anything that'll tie. And when you have the unwired ribbon or whatever, a lot of times I'll just cut maybe half inch strips or so out of that anything that you can put in the middle that's going to hold it together i'm going to use wire because i'm probably going to end up using this on some type of uh wreath or something like that but anyway take your ribbon to begin with and i'm putting my thumb in on the inside and i'm putting the pretty side up so when you do look at your ribbon you're going to notice it has an inside side or an ugly side and a pretty side so i'm putting my I'm creating the loop now, and I'm going to roll a good bit of this off of here, and then make sure that I'm starting with the straight edge. I'm going to put my thumb on the inside, ugly side toward my thumb, and bring my, I'm going to use two fingers, because this is kind of wide ribbon, forward to it, and I'm twisting around, and I just twist it completely around to make a loop. That's your center loop, and you usually see that in larger bows, so I'm making it a decent size because this is pretty good size ribbon and now trying to see if I can get it there for you to see I'm gonna twist this ribbon and I'm twisting I have this in my left hand so I know this is a little bit backwards on the camera probably but I have this in my left hand I'm, and because I'm right-handed and I'm gonna twist this ribbon and I'm making that twist underneath my thumb my thumb is still in the center of that bow so i'm twisting underneath my thumb and then letting go and that puts the pretty side back to the top again so underneath my thumb i have a twist and i'm still holding it with those same fingers and i still have my thumb in the middle of the bow and now i have just the rest of my ribbon hanging off of the end here and i'm going to decide how big i want my bow to be i'm going with about that's probably four and a half inches for my first loop. And what you'll do is get probably a half inch or so larger each time. But I, so I made one loop with all my pretty sides showing on the outside, ugly on the inside. And I'm going to twist again. This time I'm twisting toward me so that I'm going to bring the pretty side back up. But the same exact place. Every twist is going to be on top of the twist or below, right, you know, in the same area as the twist I made before. So here we go, twisting again. That brings the ugly side down, pretty side back up, and you make this loop the same exact size as the other one. And you can check that by, I'm just holding it with my middle finger under there, by pulling your loops up. See there, they're the same size. So I'm gonna make another loop underneath See, that last twist was right on top of the last one, and I'm twisting away from me this time, right on top of that other twist, bringing my pretty side back up, ugly side to the inside, and then I'm going to make this loop maybe a half inch bigger than the loop before. So, fingers are still the same. What I'm doing is still holding this last loop with my middle finger. Now, my pointer finger is down here on the bottom holding this loop in place. So, this hand is free to twist. Thumb is still in the middle. Middle finger is holding the last loop. This finger is holding this loop. I'm going to do the same thing again. Twist. This time toward me. Bring out the ugly. Bring it back underneath. And then you can test that those you can test that those measure up with each other. And so my fingers switched places. Now my thumb moved out of there. This finger is on the inside holding that last twist. This finger moved out and it's holding everything in place. And I'm gonna twist again. And I'm bringing that uh, pretty side up, going over to my last loop making it about a half inch longer than the last one and fingers switched places this one's still holding that and this one moved out to hold this let's see if i can hold it this way while i do the twist so you can see okay so now this is all the pretty side we need to twist this around so where the pretty side will be up on the other side so i'm going right over that under finger They're, these two fingers are holding tight here going over that finger like that made that twist now I'm pulling that finger out moving it up and twisting around going a little bit longer and as long as you're going a half inch longer each time past the last loop it's gonna be right you don't have to continuously bring them up every time okay so same thing and if you can see like I said, all of the twists are going one right on top of the other. My thumb is still in this hole. Twist, twist, twist. 
I'm going to put one more set of loops. Um, so this will be one, two, three, four. I'll probably put two more. I'm going to go with five on each side. Twist toward me, down, loop it up. Make sure it's half inch longer than the last one. Catch it with that other finger. This finger's still holding the last one. This finger moved out to hold the new one. Twist, this time away from me. So one time you're twisting toward you, the next time away from you. All those twists are on top of each other. Last loop, half inch longer than the one before. Fingers move out, so this finger picks up to hold this down. I'm kind of twisting between those fingers, picking that other finger out now, holding it down, bringing this twist around. So I've got one, two, three, four, and I've got one, two, three, four, five. So this will be my last one. I'm going with five on each side, half inch bigger. Now here's the, the final thing. I'm gonna go ahead and twist under here for the last twist. And then I'm going to bring, you have to worry about your tails. Some people put their tails in separately. Sometimes I like more than one set of tails. I, in fact, I almost always like three tails. That's just a, a personality thing that goes with my bows. But I'm getting a pretty good amount of this, thinking about what am I going to put this on? How long do I want the tails to be? So I'm bringing around just as if this were another loop. And I'm bringing it bringing it underneath but I'm making it really really long and we're going to cut it in half but I'm going to twist it right there hold it with my other twist and I'm going to cut another piece the same length as I'm as I'm doing with this because this is going to be my tails and I like to have three tails so you're always going to cut this at an angle this is your end piece and then you go back to this last large loop that you made cut that as an angle at an angle as well Boom. Okay, so now since I'm using the floral wire on this, remember all of my twists are all in a row. I'm going to go right into the center of that original loop where my thumb is still holding since the beginning. My other two fingers are still holding the inside of the bottom. Uh, all the twists are between my thumb and these fingers right now. And I'm bringing this wire in tight right through the middle, half on each side. And I'm going to bend it through to the bottom. So there it is, I make sure that you can see it. It's half bent on each side. And I'm gonna pull as hard as I can with this hand while pushing as hard as I can with my thumb on that side and get that tail out of the way. So I have the wire coming through here and it would have been the same thing if I was using the yarn or some of the ribbon. I would have ran it through that center and been pulling it tight now, getting ready to tie it. So I'm pulling as hard as I can, pushing with my thumb. And now I've got my finger inside that and I'm twisting. Now I can let go because the wire has it. And I'm gonna twist it about three times. And now this is ready to attach to a wreath or a basket or anything hard by tying it on with this wire and then clipping the edge of this wire. But now this doesn't too much look like a beautiful bow. What you do is you have your center loop. You're gonna pull, grab it and pull one one way and one the other. And you just continuously do that. Now we're going to do one one way, one the other. Then you switch them out and do them this way. You're kind of pulling and tugging, pulling and tugging. We can do them all on one side to begin with. Pulling and tugging, pulling and tugging. Opposite each other. Pulling and tugging, pulling and tugging, pulling and tugging. Now you st stick your hand in these, since these are the wired ribbon. And this is how you would fluff those out. Let me fluff my little center loop here. This is how you would fluff those out. And then you can pull your tails down to the front. All three of them if you're me. Just twist them in the same direction. And you have a big, beautiful, fluffy bow that, let's see, that I used probably a little over half of this. So let's see if that cost me $4.50. I probably used $3 worth of it. So there for $3, we have this bow that you would probably pay $10, $12 for at the flower shop or to have 
uh, buy pre-made at, uh, at Hobby Lobby. So there you go. That's how you make a bow. You would do the same thing with a smaller bow. If you wanted this to have two colors, you would have started with your smaller bow, started with smaller loops, started with your other color, and then when you got done using that color, you would have clipped it off, attached a piece of the new color ribbon right there just with your fingers holding it on, and just kept on with your with each of your loops getting uh, larger on each side. So there you go. There's my Share My Skills Saturday. I hope that helps you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.